Welcome to Up The Swanee, a Barnsley Heritage Connects project, brought to you by Barnsley Museums and funded by the National Lottery Heritage Fund. This recording is the result of a community heritage project uncovering the hidden histories of the mysterious, or oh, it's so mysterious, Swanee Pond in Kendry, Barnsley. Sometimes the most fascinating stories are found in the most unexpected of places, if you just look closely enough. Part of the Kendry Estate and backing on to Barnsley Cemetery near the site of the former Slazenger tennis ball factory, Swanee Pond has been a place of fly tipping and antisocial behaviour, but it's also a field of dreams, a site for quiet reflection and a rare green space within this urban residential area. Many years ago, kids were warned not to go down the Swanee as it was a dangerous place to play. People thought it was an old mine shaft from the former Pinder Oaks Colliery and an urban legend formed that told of being sucked down under the dark waters into the tunnels never to be seen again. However, we've uncovered its true origins. As the name suggests, Swanee Pond was indeed home to swans and the real mine shaft is quite a long way away. The pond was a boating lake on the Pinder Oaks estate, a mansion house once inhabited by some of Barnsley's wealthiest and most influential families. It was built as an ornamental garden feature from the natural Meesborough Dyke that flowed through the estate. Today, the pond is a welcome green space enjoyed by families and fishermen alike. Throughout the spring and summer months of 2023, the team have held creative workshops at Kendry Hospital, Barnsley Academy, Forest Academy and St Andrews Community Centre to hear from young and old about what Swanee Pond means to them. Ian, that's me, and Luke, that's him, worked together to create folk songs based on the stories they heard. This Swanee cast, See What We Did There, presents these beautiful songs alongside oral histories and poetry to bring these stories back to life. So, get a brew and a blanket and relax, listening to the Swanee songs and the stories that reveal a rich social history and folklore of this liminal space. Liminal. Liminal, what's that mean, Luke, liminal? Oh, I thought that's what it meant. Liminal. Dancing, old sun setting over ancient ground. One swan song, one swanny song. One swan song, one swanny song. One swan song, one swanny song. One swan song, one swanny. Time's life belt floating on Swanee Park. Ghosts are moving, midnight splashing, moon silver shining in Swanee Park. One swan song, one Swanee song. One swan song, one Swanee song. One swan song, one swanny song. One swan song, one swanny song. One swan song, one 
First time we started going to the Swan here, probably about seven year old. Um, we just used to go up and we'd, in the summer we'd just roll down the banking and then we'd walk round the fish pond and look for fish. I remember the fishermen and I always was a bit concerned about getting caught in a hook. So I, I must have been quite young um, and not realising, you know, that they would have been watching me walk past. I was more concerned about the hook going into the clothes or into my hair, yeah. To me, it was a place to court, if you like, um, and it had lots and lots of folklore around it, as I understand, you know, lots of stories. Don't go to the Swanee at night. It's, you know, um, if you fall in, you'll never get out. That type of thing. So um, so we'd meet, we'd meet afternoons, uh, might be a gang of us, might just be a couple of us, and everybody would sneak off to their own little corners for a kiss and a cuddle. <laughs> um, Swanee Pond was our recreation when we were kids. It was our first seaside holiday, because we couldn't afford to go to Claythorpe and Blackpool and places. My first memory is when I was about seven years old, and I had a friend called Herbert Parker, and he was interested in fishing. But them days, in the uh, early 40s, they didn't want much money, so he used to make his own fishing tackle out of a, a, a brush angle and split cane. And I used to go to their house because we were like friends in them days. Everybody used to go into everybody's houses, you know, and have a pot of tea and a tea cake and whatever. And he made me a fishing rod. So I said, right, he said, come on, we're going down to Swan and we'll go fishing. I said, oh, I love that. And we went down and he baited me up with a, a worm because they couldn't afford, you know, maggies and stuff. And I, I do actually remember that um, we, we, as it were a gang of us, and we, we actually built a, a boys town out of cardboard boxes. It was something that got off on the TV, and there were plenty of areas to, to do that, and we had a uh, lot of fun playing down in the Kendry. Everyone's got their own swanning Everyone's got their Kendry time of day Everyone's got their Kendry stuff to say Everyone's got their Kendry time of night When the swanny moon is Kendry bright Everyone's got their own Kendry Everyone's got their Kendry time of day Everyone's got their Kendry Like gold in the swanny well Everyone's got their swanny songs to sing Rising like Mr. Kendry morning breeze Everyone's got their own Kendry Everyone's got their own swanny Everyone's got their own Kendry Everyone's got their own swanny Everyone's got their own Kendry Everyone's got their own swanny Everyone's got their own Kendry, everyone's got their own Swanee. I should think I'd be about four and a half or five. We used to go down with my friend Annette and we had the run of the place. The dad was a fisherman, he was a miner. And miners loved to come out into open spaces when they wasn't working. And his uh, her dad, he was a fisherman, so we used to go down with him. And then he used to just let us run around. And the freedom of the place. 
Um, we've had a jam jar with, with string on and, and, and a fishing net and gone fishing. And I can't remember how many times I fell in. Um, so it was a very special, special place. And I call it a place of dreams and wishes, really, because as a young child, we had the run of the place and it were all overgrown. There were no money spent on it. It was like a poor man's park. Local historian and author Jane Ainsworth rummaged through centuries of archives and old newspaper articles to unpick and uncover the largely forgotten history of the pond. She revealed fascinating facts, ranging from a priest watching the Aurora Borealis reflected in the pond in 1882 to Mary Queen of Scots' armour being kept as a relic in the mansion house. The first appearance of the Swanee Pond we can find in its current form is the 1892 Ordnance Survey map, as trees obscure the area in earlier maps. The name's Dre, Ken Dre. I lived in Kendry for a year and a day. The name's Dre, Ken Dre. I lived in Kendry for a year and a day. I lived on Gerald Way Then I moved to Neville Ave To a house with an inside lock Big flush! The name's Dre, Ken Dre I lived in Kendry for a year and a day The name's Dre, Ken Dre I lived in Kendry for a year and a day Then I went to Swanee Pond Where I met a stunning blonde Labrador! Together off we stroll Back to her abode The name's Dre, Ken Dre I lived in Kendry for a year and a day The name's Dre, Ken Dre I lived in Kendry for a year and a day I'm sorry I've lost my key So you can have a cup of tea You'll just have to sit on my knee I'm desperate for a Biscuit! The name's Dre, Ken Dre I lived in Kendry for a year and a day The name's Dre, Ken Dre I lived in Kendry for a year and a day It's people in Kendry and it, it's camaraderie there's a lot of a lot of people you might be old Ren but everybody everybody will help one another and to look out for one another and I suppose it's like other places yeah there are bad areas in Kendry but there's no way have I ever wanted to leave Kendry despite demolitions that went off and things like that. No, I've always liked Kendry. You know, we decide where we'd be going, we'll go down to Swanee. Yeah. You just wander off yeah. and go, because it was a bit of a walk, but, yeah. We just went off for days, yeah. But there were lots of places to go. Now, houses are built on them. Yeah. But, there were plenty of fields and yeah. 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 There was nothing for you to be in the house for. You were in one room. Right. You didn't go upstairs in your bedroom then. No. And, and you know, yeah. you were in one room. Uh, we, well, we used to fa uh, acquire or find old drain pipes on the estate whenever they'd be doing a bit of work and we'd scurry back, uh, aged eight. To, to my nan's garden and we'd, we'd kind of uh, dig them into the garden to create a hole and we'd, we'd, we'd race the ferrets underneath them. <laughs> it's a very very Barnsley thing to do, you know. The sort of the stereotype of Kes country is whippets and lurchers and, and you know, kind of pigeons and flat caps. Um, and, I, and I think the town has moved on from that in, in, a, in a great way um, and there's some great work, cultural work going on in the town. And, but, but we are still that. And we're still proud of that. And, and you know, everyone I speak to, you know, I've got a whippet now. 
<laughs> I've got two flat caps, and I'm proud of that. And, and, and going back to that childhood in the 80s, and I think I was the last generation uh, before we had mobile phones, so I was on the very cusp of that old world to sort of new world, which is a, a real visceral change in society happened. You know, I could I played out till you know till, till, the, till the sun came down. You know, and people wouldn't dream of doing that now. My family lived at 120 Cemetery Road, opposite the entry to the cemetery and the large cemetery square, which was a lovely play area for children. The Birkinshaws lived at Cemetery House next to the small entry gate to the cemetery. The large gates were always securely locked, except for funerals. I was born at Pinder Oaks Nursing Home on the far side of the Swanee, as we lived at 120 Cemetery Road at that time. My sister used to wheel my pram round the paths of the cemetery. I learned to read from the gravestones. I asked her if we united at the bottom of the gravestones meant full up. I was afraid of going near the Swanee as it was known to be bottomless. There was always a pile of discarded plants and flowers. As children, we picked out the ones still living and put them on the graves of the poor ones with no flowers. Last Christmas Eve, I took a stroll Towards the Swanee Pond I was slipping, I was sliding Jollying along Then I saw a robin His breast was red as blood Oh, how his heart was throbbing And so it should The robin said it's Christmas Eve I bring you a gift Only if you still believe And then I insist You can have this token From the Swanee Pond It cannot be broken It falls the Kenji Bond From Neverland to Year's End and back up to the pond From Neverland to Year's End And back up to the pond That was the robin's promise To care and cherish all The spirit of the swanee You can hear it call The spirit of the swanee The spirit of the swanee, you can hear it call. The spirit of the swanee, you can hear it call. The spirit of the swanee, you can hear it call. The spirit of the swanee. I've known the Swanee all my life. As a small child, I remember being taken there by my parents and grandparents for a walk when the weather was good. I remember seeing men fishing. One fisherman once got his hook tangled in my hair as he was casting. I remember screaming the place down. I thought he was pulling my head off. And when I got older and was allowed to play out, I, like all the other Kenja children, often made my way to the Swanee. In my memory, it was always summer. Along the banks of the stream that fed the swanee, honeysuckle and wild roses grew. I can still remember their perfume. Where the water left the pond was nowhere near as pretty. I think it went down the hill towards the Slazinger factory. The hill from Kendry to the pond was known as Swanee Hill and it was covered in brambles, marvellous for blackberries. As a family, we collected them every autumn. I also took my own children right up until my mum and dad moved house. My brothers used to camp there. They thought they were so grown up. But unbeknown to them, my dad would go and check them to make sure they were all right. I know it's been beautified with landscaping and such since, but I haven't been since about 1980. I hope you'll find my scribblings of interest. 
With regards, Catherine Bennett. There have been two houses called Pinder Oaks on the same site. The first dates from around 1500 and the second from the late 1700s. John Hugh Burland supplied some of the answers to our questions in 1777 in an article in the Barnsley Chronicle which quoted him 102 years earlier in the Yorkshire Gazette on the 13th of June 1830. This is John Hugh Burland, but he does sound quite a bit like me. All that much admired country residence called Pinder Oaks, in every way calculated for the reception of a respectable family. The house comprises entrance hall, breakfast, dining and drawing rooms of ample dimensions, with spacious cellars, storeroom, butler's pantry, servants' hall, large kitchen and scullery well supplied with hard and soft water, seven excellent bedchambers and four dressing rooms. The house, with a fruitful garden, is most delightfully situated, commanding a view of a most beautiful and extensive landscape. The outbuildings are detached and consist of two coach houses with granary above, stabling for nine horses, saddle and harness room, lumber room and cow house with good haylofts over the same cart shed, barn and piggeries with fold and stable yards. A never failing stream of water runs through the property. This property is situated one mile from the market town of Barnsley and is a desirable residence either for a gentleman of retired habits or one fond of field sports, being within Earl Fitzwilliams and the Badsworth Hunts. The male and several other coaches pass and repass the principal entrance daily. Huh, I'd bite. Down at the swanning, I was fishing. I was wishing I had brought my flask I was gagging for a drink Down at the Swanee I was sitting, sun was knitting Shadows from the trees Painted in the darkest ink And I thought I saw Someone misty, someone drifting From the water to the air Back to the water from the air Someone see through like glass And they just seem to pass straight through me Down at the Swanee I was shaking, I was quaking In my old pit boots Well it really made me think Down at the Swanee there are ghosts here, wispy gin clear from the big old house. You'll miss them if you blink. Servants from the big house standing where they stood for a photo all those years ago. Servants from the old house come back to haunt us like the moonlight haunting a dark night. I was wishing the ghosts would go away But they seem to want to stay They seem to want to stay They seem to want to stay And I've heard that there were, there were kind of stories, folklore about things that happened there that people said it was a bottomless lake was that, you know, any other stories that you can remember about it? Or? Oh, yes. It, um, it were a pit shaft, 
it was uh, deep. Um, but yet, when it was hot, some of the boys are going for a swim. And they'd say, no, it's not deep, but it were, I think it was muddy and silty. You couldn't see, it wasn't clear. You couldn't see um, the bottom or anything like that. It was, But yeah, they'd, 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 they'd go swimming in it and things like that, yeah. I suppose throwing stones, unlike every other kid did. Um, we used to go and watch, and watch people fishing. And there used to be quite a few that went. Wildlife and birds. We used to, now and again, we used to get like a little, a uh, couple of moor ends on. We've even had swans on there at one particular time. Uh, errands used to come in, uh, and frogs, frog spawn, that were a big thing at school. Take your wellingtons, and we all used to trug off. We had little jam jars with a bit of string around it, and used to go and collect taddies. <laughs> and then take them back to school, put them in the tank, and then watch them as they, you know, grew up into little baby frogs. And then we used to take them back. In 1867, the first coal was brought out of the new Pinder Oaks Colliery, owned by Darley Main Colliery Company, of whom William Croft of Pinder Oaks House was a proprietor, and the first coal was brought out amidst, it says here, Immense cheering. In 1879, the site was visited by three terrible hail and rain storms. The register at the cemetery states that by noon on Sunday, he saw a water spout at the east end of the cemetery over by the New Oaks. He described it as being a large black cloud with a long tail which extended nearly to the ground. In a few minutes, about 20 yards of strong walling of the cemetery was carried away the foundation being uprooted, as well as loads of large trees. The water, which had gathered on the side near his Sheffield Road, then rushed in, destroying everything that it came in contact with. The Reverend John Mason was one of Barnsley's guardians of the poor. He was living alone at Pinder Oaks in 1881. He wrote to the Barnsley Independent with a detailed description about the Aurora Borealis he'd observed on the 17th of November, 1882. The Reverend John saw, on the 28th of March, 1873, a Camberwell Beauty Butterfly. He spared its fragile life, as he said, and sent a full description to the Barnsley Independent. In 1879, thieves, Mr. Slack, Cutler of Sheffield, Mr. Godby here, scissor forger of Sheffield, and Mr. Buckley, miner of Barnsley, broke into Pinder House and ransacked it. They stole a silver communion plate belonging to St. Luke's of Woodsborough Common and other valuable items worth £26,610 in today's money. The plate was recovered and the burglars were committed for trial. In World War II, residents remember the site being used for allotments to grow food for the war effort. And today, the pond forms part of a nature reserve with loads of species of animals and plants, including giant fish and rare orchids. I've never heard about this pond before I've never heard about this pond before I've never heard about this pond before Well now you have Oh yes you have It's called the Swanee It's very bonny it's dreams and wishes are dreamed by fishes I've never heard about this pond before I've never heard about this pond before I've never heard about this pond before well, now you have, oh yes.
Yes, you have. It used to be full of cats and dogs. And supermarket trolleys now is full of super frogs. The crane came for its jollies. It stands on the trolleys. So don't forget your ways. I've never heard about this pond before. I've never heard about this pond before. I've never Yes, you have. Oh, yes, you have. There were days when we went down there, they used to see a dead dog floating up and down up pond, and smell weren't what you might call marvellous, you know. One day, <coughs> me and my brother were fishing. And as we were fishing, he said, our Jim said, what's that smell? And anyway, when, when we looked, there were a dead dog at right hand side of us and a dead cat at the other side of us. And because of that, why there were these dogs thrown its swanny is because during 1948 and early 50s, when people had got a, a, a dog that were ill, they couldn't afford to go to vets. Drugs. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of drugs. Just round this area where we sat now mm -hmm. were terrible for drug dealers and and people just didn't want it. You could you couldn't put all down in Kendry. Otherwise it grew legs and it were gone. Mm -hmm. And people boarded houses boarded up houses, it was so depressing to look at and that's why they started with demolitions mm -hmm. but a lot of people lost their homes that didn't need to lose their homes the late 80s the mid late 80s mm -hmm. the the area became became bad there was a lot of drug dealing mm -hmm. there was a lot of burglaries and they were burgled twice and parents mm -hmm. which destroyed uh, mm -hmm. destroyed them because you know and uh, and the, the area really went down. I once had the classic of when my parents were burgled. The policeman who came, he said, at one time, we would put the pins on the houses that had been burgled. Now we put the pins on them that haven't been. That's how, that's how sad it got, really. Just listen, the swanee remembers. Oh, the swanee remembers. Just listen, the swanee remembers. The swanee is weeping, our children are sleeping. The swanee is weeping, our children are sleeping. Swanee is weeping, our children are sleeping. The Swanee is weeping, our children are sleeping. Swanee is weeping, 
Rescue somebody out at Swanee. Well, tell me that story. Then. Yeah, well, all I know, she said, she said, there were these, he got into difficulties, you know, this this chap. And she says, uh, there were all blokes, as she put it, all the stood and thinking, are we to get a ladder or a rope? She says, and I just stripped off to my undies and went in. She got him out, but unfortunately, he died later. You know, I, I, do, I never got to know name or who it was. I tried to trace things if there were anything in, in like an old Barnsley Chronicle or whatever, but uh, I never found out. Hi, my name's Peter Stevenson. I'm a local poet and I got involved in the Kendry Swanee Pond project earlier in the year. Uh, and this is my poem, The Friday Kendry Experience. Out of left field, a bolt from the blue, to meet some new friends, though we didn't know who. There's a pond with no bottom, or that's what's being said. Cold water swimming left some characters dead. The old Swanee Pond goes back a long way. That's what we call history, so what can I say? It's seen more than its fair share of old bikes and trolleys. It's seen many trysts and romantic follies. Are you experienced in this sort of day? It was new to many, is what I would say. An audio history, some music and art, and we were all grateful to just be a part. We drew us some pictures, we wrote us some songs, we listened to stories of where it belongs. In the history of Kendry, Swanee Pond has its part, and all of this work we do from the heart. There were also stories of great sadness, including four drownings that we know about. And in the official language of the time, you can still find the human stories. There was George Ruffley, born in 1910, drowned in 1929, a miner or haulage hand of 32 Commercial Street, went missing on the 25th of March, 1929. His body was discovered in Swan Pond on the 15th of April. His mother and sister explained he'd been suffering from influenza and was depressed following the death of his boxer brother Richard in November 1927. The coroner, unwilling to say that a youth of 19 had drowned himself without clear evidence, issued a verdict of found drowned. Trevor Hooson, born in 1929, drowned in 1941. He was the 12-year-old son of Hugh Hooson, a miner of Junction Street, and he drowned in Swan Pond on about the 6th of January, despite the efforts of various witnesses to help him with rope and plank and ladder. Trevor's last words were, I cannot hold myself up any longer. I think there's a rope in our greenhouse. 
The coroner's verdict was accidentally drowned while expressing disappointment that he wasn't saved with so many people standing round. Edith Baxter, born 1906, drowned 1941. She was a single woman of Burke Crescent on Kendry and was found drowned in Swan Pond on the 29th of April, 1941, aged 35. Her father said she'd left home that morning with a bucket of coal for his allotment greenhouse, which wasn't far from the pond. Edith had suffered from periods of depression, but was otherwise healthy, and her death was a mystery. William Henry Rushforth, born 1873, drowned 1944. He was a bricklayer's labourer of Greenwood Avenue and drowned in Swan Pond in late December 1944, aged 71. He hadn't worked for six months and suffered from severe headaches. Now we come to the end of the podcast, but the project isn't over yet until we save these stories for the people of Kendry into the future. A book, including these songs and these histories, will be published in 2024, alongside beautiful artworks by Richard Kitson and Liz Kay. When the Kendry kids grow up, they'll be able to find the history of their local pond in this book and know that many of them contributed through musical workshops to this work. Thanks for listening to Kendrycast. The narration and the lyrics are by Ian McMillan and the people of Kendry. The music's by Luke Carver-Goss. The sound and editing is by Mooney Wainwright. 
The research is by Jane Ainsworth. The producer is Stephen Skelly. And I want to thank our wonderful community band, Richard Kitson, Nina Brown, Peter Stevenson and Dr Tegwin Roberts and to the DMC Centre in Barnsley for their recording space. And of course, with special thanks to all the community in Kendry for sharing your memories of the magical Swanee Pond. Up the Swanee is a Barnsley Heritage Connects project brought to you by Barnsley Museums and funded by the National Lottery Heritage Fund. I don't know about you, but I'm off down the Swanee now. Come on. <laughs> <laughs>